Hi, it's Matt with C1 again, and today I'm going to go over the indicators in ServiceNow IRM and how you can use those for your continuous monitoring program. So you'll see here I've got a entity set up, Cloud Management, and it has three controls that I've set up, which are IM5, and this is from the Adobe CCF. I'm not going to get into the nuance of that, but I've got these three controls from the Adobe CCF set up. IM5, which is a logical access review. IM3, which has is an inventory rec reconciliation and specifically ensuring that the assets have owners assigned. And then VM1 has to do with vulnerability scans and that we're completing them. So I've got all three of these controls and you'll see they're all compliant. So they've been attested to and they're in a compliant state. So the first thing we're gonna do is go over this logical access review controlled. And we I have an indicator set up down here, perform quarterly account reviews. The control is all about uh, performing account reviews on a quarterly basis. And you'll see here I've got this set up. It's a method on this one is manual, which means we're gonna generate a task and we're gonna ask for a percentage. And in this case, we're looking for it to have 100%. There's some instructions here. And then a schedule is quarterly. So I'm gonna go ahead and execute this. So we'll go ahead and execute it. And then I'm gonna pause and come back once the indicator task is created. Okay, so the indicator task has been generated and I'm gonna go ahead and complete this. So on this one, we'll go ahead and open this task and we'll see it's assigned to the Rich Richie who is the owner of the entity. And this is out of the box functionality. If you wanted it to go to somebody else, that would require some probably, I would just say it's gonna be customization, not even configuration. So this indicator task gets generated. An important thing to note on indicator tasks versus your attestations that you may be familiar with is these are an IRM operator role versus the attestations are an IRM operator light. So from a licensing perspective, that's an important thing to know. But basically, I'm going to go run through this. Rich is going to come in here and he's going to perform his quarterly account review. And I'm going to just take a quick screenshot so I have something to attach. He'll go ahead and attach the evidence. So we'll go ahead and do that. And I'll just grab this screenshot that I just took. So that represents attaching evidence to this. Um, we can put in some comments, test one, two, three, that just would represent capturing the work that was done. We'll go ahead and give a value of 100. That represents that 100% of this is passing, and we're going to say the result is passed. And then we'll go ahead and close this, and we'll update it. And then back to the indicator, we'll see, we'll see that the result, this will take just a second. And I'm going to pause while we let the automation run in the background and come right back. All right, so down here we see we have the indicator results. So if I click in there, we'll see we have the result, the collected date, and it shows that it, um, this check mark indicates that it was passed. We've got the value and just some information there. So I'm going to work my way back to the entity, go back to the control. And then we'll be back to our entity. And now we're gonna look at a little bit more advanced indicator, which um, our next one we'll go into is AM3, AM-03, which has to do with um, reconciling the scans and ensuring that all inventory to items are assigned an owner. So I've set up this indicator and I'm gonna validate, it's basic. Basic means we're gonna use conditions on a table and we're going to look up that. So our supporting data, we have the source table is CMDB relationship CI. And then for supporting fields, I'm going to grab the parent, the child class, um, the child owned by and the operational status. And then I'm going to sample everything. For the basic criteria, I'm looking for the parent. In this case, I've just got the entity put right in here. So the entity is cloud management that the child's operational status is operational, that it's a Windows or a Linux server, 
um, just this is I'll show this in a second this is just saying which type of relationship contained and contains by and then in this case I actually need to that didn't save <laughs> so let me just update this we're also going to filter on the child owned by is empty or null and the reason why we're doing this is we're actually looking for this to fail in other words if we get results that means it failed so when I come to the method I have um, result if the value meets or exceeds the target value it's gonna be failed I could say passed and that means everything need that I expect a result in this case I'm gonna say that it failed so if it's one or greater that means it failed and just to show you this table so here is the table that I'm querying and we see I've got cloud management here's my list of servers and we see some of them have don't have owners so we do expect this to fail so I'm gonna go ahead and execute this and then I'm gonna pause while it runs and then I'll come back okay I'm back and we'll see that uh, let me move my face out of the way here and we see the results um, have completed and now we see that we have a fail the result was false and we're updated here we failed and I'm going to go ahead and, or actually, <laughs> go here. Our previous result was passed, and now our status has failed. And so I'm going to jump into the result, and we see, okay, we have the result that we just took. Gives us the collected date. It's not checked. That means it failed. It tells us the values. So these are the 20. In this case, we had 22 results that failed. And if we come down here, and I'll move myself out of the way again, what we get is a list of all of the servers that do not have owners. So we see here's all the servers, Windows servers in this case, and they don't have owners. And we can actually click in here and go see the record. So this is really cool. So basically we get the results and not only that, we can go look at them to see what is needed to be done here. So the next thing about an indicator result when it fails and I'm going to jump back to the control real quick. We'll also see what happens is we automatically get put into not compliant. We were compliant before we ran this indicator, and now we're not compliant. And beyond that, we also get an issue generated. We see an issue is generated. Cloud management has an indicator failure. So we are, the control is automatically marked not compliant, and we automatically get an issue created. And I'll open that up just to show that. And so now we have a task that we can go work to begin to remediate this problem. And we see in the, in the issue, we get a link to the indicator results. So we have that information. And then like I showed on the indicator result on the other tab, we'll have the list of all the servers that don't have owners as part of the information we need to start remediation. The final indicator I'm gonna go over is the um, scripted kind. And this is for a really advanced use case. So let me get this pinned out of my way. I'm back to the entity and I'm gonna go here to VM1 vulnerability scans. And this one, you could argue that this would be done by the vulnerability program. But what I'm saying on this one, it's saying the organization conducts the vulnerability scan in the production environment. And the piece of this that I'm looking at for this entity is that the vulnerability scanning agent is installed on all the servers that belong to this entity. So we'll go into that indicator. And the indicator is validate Nessus is running on all servers. And I did a little, this is a demo environment, so I did a little bit of setup just to kind of make this work. Um, and I'll show you this. So I have the CIs again that are related to this cloud management entity and here's an example of one of those and you'll see down here I have a running process and I just went in a handful of these and I created a running process and I named it Nessus now if discovery is running and all the things there's gonna be a lot more information here than just the name Nessus but for sake of just a quick demo I wanted to have an example so I have a handful of these servers that have Nessus running and then a bunch that don't so again I expect this one to fail as well and I had tested and that's why you see the previous results were failed. But what's going on here is we have a script 
And there's three things that the script is expecting back. It's expecting back the result dot passed, and it's either looking for a true or false. It's respected, expecting back a result dot value, which is the count. And then it's expecting back the supporting data IDs. And what these will do is allow it to create the results and have a list of results. And basically what I'm doing is first, I'm getting the sys ID of the CMDB CI that's related to the entity. So that's my variable service. I've got the value I've preset to zero and I've got a failed array that's empty to begin with. And then I'm gonna start by going to the CMDB relationship CI. I'm gonna get the list of those servers. Or I've, I've got my encoded query that gets me kind of the nuance of what I'm looking for in the child items. And then I've got the parent, which is the service, and I've set that here. So now I know that I'm gonna look for all of the CIs related to this service that meet these criteria, which is that they're operational and that they're either a Windows server or a Linux server. I query that list, and then for each result, what I'm gonna go do is check seem to be running process and I'm passing for the computer, I'm passing in the relationship CI value of the child and then I'm gonna add in the name is Nessus because this is a really simple example and then I'm gonna query that and if I don't get a result back, then I'm gonna iterate on the value and I'm gonna push the relationship CI into this array so that we can have the supporting data. So I'm gonna go ahead and execute this and then again, I'm gonna pause and I'll come back when we have the results. Okay, the results have executed and you see down here, I've got my latest result, which did not pass and I got 32, which was the same as when I did my initial test of this. And if I go to the actual results, I've got, again, the name of it, the collected date, um, the check isn't checked because it didn't pass, the value is 32, and then we see that um, we have a list of all of the servers that are related to this service, which is related to the entity that are not running Nessus. And again, we can click in and we can go view the actual CI record. But what's really, again, important here, if I go back to the control, that control went from compliant to not compliant automatically. And again, we get another issue created this time for not having the vulnerability agent running on the servers that belong to this um, service. So that's a really cool way. Indicators are really a cool way to be able to have a control at the level of something like a service and then go for the various controls, go look at all of the servers in this example that belong to that service that are in the CMDB and you can evaluate different attributes on there. Things like running software installed, running processes, whether it has an owner, any kind of attributes you're collecting on your CIs in the CMDB, you're able to do that. Furthermore, on indicators, the examples I gave today were really around the CMDB and that is probably the most common use case, but that's not what we're limited to. We could look at, if we're running vulnerability, response, we could look at our vulnerable items table and look at um, vulnerable items that have passed the due date for the remediation targets. We could go, if we're using change management, we could look at data around our changes and approvals. So there's all kinds of examples. Any data in ServiceNow is easily at our fingertips for these indicators. And even if we don't actually have that data in service now, we could do what's called, a, we could create a lookup table and we could use Integration Hub or an API and we could go out to another system and pull data in. So we could use something like PowerShell and go collect information from Active Directory or go to just any other kind of service we're running. We can pull that information in and evaluate that as part of our indicators. So that's my sort of quick demo today on indicators. And as always, if you'd like, if you're a developer and you'd like to get some copies of the scripts I ran and those things, just hit me up on LinkedIn and I'd be happy to send you some ex the examples of these indicators I created. And if you're a risk and compliance 
a risk and compliance practitioner and you would like some help with ServiceNow IRM, again, just like the developers I'm saying, reach out to me on LinkedIn and I'd be happy to um, reach, reach out and have a conversation and see how we can help you. Thanks.